Today I want to show you how I extract honey. Hello, I'm Griffith. Welcome to Gwynny Griffith. Here we talk everything beekeeping, farming, countryside living, and we do reviews as well. Now we have started extracting. It's the middle of September, and there's a fair bit to do this year. And we have started a little bit earlier than usual. And uh, I'm glad I'm in here. The weather's still fine. Um, I feel a bit guilty. I should be doing work outside, but I'm in here today because we need to get this honey processed. Now, I just want to take this video to show you my setup, how we extract honey, because that's one question we get up asked all the time. How do you extract honey? What kind of tools, machinery do you guys use? Uh, I think this would be a very useful video, especially if you're thinking um, of increasing numbers. Um, you don't have to spend a huge amount of money to be able to extract honey uh, on a commercial scale. I'll show you exactly what I've got here. And this system is pretty much based on other bee farmers that I've seen and I've copied uh, a few ideas and integrated them into my own. So first thing to say when you're in the honey house, the biggest trick you need, we've got a dehumidifier there, soft now to save the noise interfering with this video, but that stops any kind of moisture in the air from seeping into the honey. Honey's been exposed here, it's exposed in the extractor, it's, it's exposed in the honey sump, if we don't control the humidity in this room, the moisture content of that honey can increase and the honey can ferment. So that's a big trick. Because when we built this room, we built it insulated and totally sealed so that we can control the heat and the humidity in here. Works really well. So, first of all, we bring the honey supers into the extracting room. This room, to note, is very, very small. We have outgrown this. Uh, building now probably two years ago and we're still in here unfortunately we bring eight to ten supers in at a time we'll extract that take those boxes out then we bring a, a fresh batch in every time that's how we've got to do it here now i'm hoping next year we're going to be able to move into a bigger building on the farm um, it's looking likely we're going to be able to do that next year kit out a uh, room probably six times the size of this building maybe bigger and that'll be a whole uh, honey house production line and an extracting room uh, two in one instead of being forced to jar and extract in here. Um, we've got some jarring tanks there. The, the big one we've had to take out because we're extracting. We've got a big 200 kilo uh, Carnegie tank that we bought from Thorns. Um, when we extract honey, that tank is too big to have three big tanks in here. So we actually got to take that out when we're extracting. And then once we finish extracting, then that tank can come back in. But we bring the honey supers in here. The first process then is we take the honey supers from here. We take the supers from here. We uncap it here using this Thomas. Uh, it's called a Carlisle Uncapper. Click on the link above there to see a review of this uncapper. It goes into the Carl's Fritz Appy Melter. We collect all the wax in here. We drain, this is constantly draining honey. So we collect the honey at the bottom in the jug. Then the uncapped frame moves from this tank. The frame goes into this 20 frame license spinner. This spins the honey out. We collect that at the bottom. Then we take the honey from here and we pour it into the honey sump here. Now this honey sump actually filters the honey for us is heated honey sump. This honey, this sump pretty much filters the honey perfectly. If you're selling honey for bulk in barrels or in buckets, this uh, will do a good enough job. If you need to jar the honey from, from, uh, from here, then you need to run that through a separate filter again. But this filters the honey perfectly. Uh, very, very pleased with how this tank works. Click on the link below to see a review of this tank uh, being uh, used and what my thoughts about it. So the final stage of honey extracting, we run the honey from the, the sump through a 50 ml pipe. And if we store in honey for the rest of the year, we're not going to jar it straight away. 
that we literally fill buckets there straight away. Job done, fill buckets, move them into storage. If, however, we need to jar that honey straight away, then we run the, the honey through a final filter, which are these 20 filters. A 200 or a 320 micron filter will be perfect for that job. These filters we actually sell on our website, so if you wanted one of these filters, we sell those filters. And that's pretty much it. Super, super primitive, super, super simple. We haven't got uh, much kit. We haven't got massive machinery or massive equipment in here. We're confined to the spaces that we've got, uh, but we make it work and um, this works out okay. I'm pretty happy with how the system is going. So that's the system. Let's see that working. Well, there you go, you've seen how we extract honey in a super small room and we're still getting it done. Now, there's lots of ways for me to improve the system here. Number one, I need a bigger building and that is in the pipeline already because it does get very claustrophobic in here sometimes and especially if we need a jar and extract honey at the same time, it's not really possible to do the two of them. So we gotta extract a batch, stop extracting, sort out the orders and then we can start extracting again so it does take a long time when we do move to a bigger building next year we're not going to have that problem we can we're going to be able to jar and extract simultaneously extracting is not going to interfere with our jarring because we jar honey all the time we sell honey wholesale we sell honey on the website we sell honey uh, online we jar honey pretty much every single day so extracting does put a bit of a spanner in the works for us at the minute uh, that needs to be uh, resolved, but we can't resolve it until we move in to our bigger building. What we, uh, what I haven't said, what I do in here, which is really, really good, we've got these swanky uh, trays on wheels, which the honey supers fit on. 
Now I stack one of these trays up full of honey supers and as I extract the honey, the empty one then goes on the tray next door. It's got a stainless steel base, it collects any drips and they can keep the floor quite clean and tidy. And because we're in a small room, very, very handy to be able to move things out the way depending where in the room we're working. But Gwyn and Griff is from humble beginnings. Uh, I'm a first generation beekeeper. Everything here was set up from scratch. And this is where, this is the room that got us serious into honey. Um, it cost a lot of money at the time to do and it served us very, very well for several years. Still going to do us this year. Um, and I'm really impressed with you know what we've been able to do out of a small room. Um, just we really need a bigger room right now. One good thing about this system is and the way we've set this up, we don't actually we don't have to pump honey toss. We have got a swanty pump, a small swanty pump, but we try not to use that. Extracting like this takes a bit longer, but everything is pretty primitive. Um, if a honey pump breaks down and you rely on a honey pump, then you then you've got to stop extracting. This system here, we we're just using gravity. The honey sump is set up off the ground, gravity fed into the bucket. We manually take honey from the extractor and the app melter, pour it into the honey sump, so everything's manual, it's not used a pump. Now, depending on the way you look at that, that might be a negative or a positive. It just depends how we look at it. Of course, manually loading honey back and forth takes longer and wears your body out. Pumping is a lot easier, but you've got the extra cost of running more electric and uh, relying on a pump. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And don't forget, if you like this video and you want to watch more of the same kind of content, then please subscribe to my YouTube channel. I try my best to upload new videos every week. Thanks for watching.